morning everybody well this morning for me um, I woke up this morning and I was thinking about how uh, well I think I want to encourage somebody because you know how, how it is when you're starting out with something or you're doing something whether it be for the kingdom or for your own business and and people have a tendency to kind of look down on you when you are first starting out and you know they kind of make you feel a little less than because you're not at a certain level of what they think success is I want to encourage you that because that's excellent fuel for you number one but it's also an opportunity for you not to get um, bitter or to get you know in competition because you can easily get outside the will of God trying to keep up with something that is not part of your purpose if people are going to look down on you I say let them look down on you for a season because if you're if you're doing your purpose then eventually you're gonna pop up you're gonna start popping up everywhere but you know I, I run into that a lot because you know I uh, you know I, I got my church I don't have a whole lot going on right now I got a few people and we got you know in some people's mind they will say oh you're you, you don't have anything but I got this vision and I, you know, I put things out there and people see where I'm going. And you can always tell where somebody's going by what they're, what they're putting out. And so uh, I already know that God has planted us to do a certain thing. And it's just a matter of time until things just start to turn around. But in the meantime, I think it's interesting to kind of look at how people treat you during these stages. Um, you know, even, it, even when it comes to something small, I mean, I can... I can be doing something, and I'm not going to make this about me, but in, in, in just in my personal life, you can you can tell when somebody don't respect you. They don't say it, but they're, they're looking at you as if, you know, you're a burden because you're not at a certain level yet, you know, uh, especially when it comes to the household of faith. I think we need to be very, very careful how we treat those in the household of faith. When it's in your power to act, I believe you ought to go out of your way to um, accommodate and to bear the burdens with those of the household of faith because the Lord, you know, uh, looks at that. Uh, and, you know, right now, like going back to me, okay. Right now, it may look like things are not just the way most people think they should be. But if you stick around long enough, God's going to start to put you in a place where you are like the Bible said, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Now, I'm not saying you do all this to be the million dollar guy or the, or the, the person that's, aha, look at me, you thought, you thought. It's not about that. It's just about showing how good God is. But he can only honor those who have been faithful to the process. If you're not faithful, then God is not going to exalt you. Now, the Bible talks about right here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 and 10. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This goes to people when, you know, uh, they may not see you at a certain level yet, going back to that. Well, the Bible talks about if you're a Christian, you want to bear one another's burdens. I know they're not on the same level. I know they're not exactly what you think they sh should be, but you should bear the burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. And then the Bible says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are the household of faith. Now, that's a smack in the mouth for a lot of people because we are so accustomed to if you have the right clothes or you drive the right car, or you live in the right house or you have the right connections, if you have this, if you have that, then we'll treat you with respect. But the Bible says, no, you bear the burden. And if they are the household of faith and if you're a child of God, then you just deal with, with, with what they have. And God will get the glory out of that. But he's looking for somebody who he can move through, who he can breathe in. And I think as we have opportunity, now I'm not saying you go out there and just do everything. You do what God called you to do. But if you have an opportunity, I think you ought to bear the, the burden for each other and, and take that thing two miles whenever you can. My point is don't look down on people just because it appears that they're down. Uh, if you keep on watching long enough, you're going to probably be asking them, how can they help you? Uh, and for those who have been despised by those small beginnings, I would say keep doing what you're doing. Keep preaching, keep singing, keep doing whatever it is God called you to do. 
Don't compare yourself to nobody because nobody can be in the spot that God placed you in. And so God is never going to ask you, how come you were not like this person? He's going to ask you, how come you weren't, weren't more like you? So stop apologizing for the way God made you. And you keep running your race and stay in your lane. And don't compare yourself to anybody. These are words that I, that I encourage myself with. Make sure you have a spirit of excellence. Make sure you're doing everything when it comes to God. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Don't be talking about think about it or maybe I'll pray about it. No, no, no. If you feel that it's not for you, don't get involved with it. If you feel like something is involved for you, then get involved with it and throw your whole self at it. Don't just throw half halfway and say, well, I did it. That's not excellent. You wasted your time. You want to make sure that if you're going to do anything, give it all you got. I hope that helps somebody.